Tonight on Nation to Nation, budget time. The Liberal government unveils their spending plan, but will it be enough to bridge the gap? We speak with Indigenous Affairs Minister Carolyn Bennett and the Assembly of First Nations Regional Chief for Ontario, Isidore Day. The Nation to Nation MPs panel will also weigh in. This is Nation to Nation, I'm Jorge Barrera. The Liberals unveiled their 2017 budget Wednesday, and it includes $3.4 billion in new funding for Indigenous peoples and communities over the next five years. Most of the money is going for infrastructure and health care. The budget also invests dollars into building a new nation-to-nation -nation relationship. Joining me now is Assembly of First Nations Regional Chief for Ontario, Isidore Day. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk budget. A lot of big numbers are thrown out. 3.4 billion total, 27% increase over what 2015-2016 of funding levels. What did you make of the numbers released uh, on Wednesday? Well, you know, last year uh, this time we we look at the fact that the, there was no investments in health. Mm -hmm. uh, we we wanted to have the 2% cap address last year. Uh, this year we look at the the budget and it's health centric. Basically. Uh, we wanted to see more in the area of housing that was specific. We didn't see that. But what we didn't see in health last year, we're seeing it this year. Uh, we still don't uh, have a clear sense of the 2% cap, uh, which is a major problem for us because in 1996, when the 2% cap was uh, uh, first born, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a, a, a reduction in, in $30 billion, uh, mm -hmm. to First Nations uh, since that time. So. Mm -hmm. You know, un until the money reaches the ground, it's still a fiscal shell game, and, and we have to be optimistic about what's there now in the area of health and really have a good look at what this budget means. So our, our folks are hard at work, Jorge, and, and we're going to make sense of, of this heads and tails over the next uh, week or so. Now, you've seen two uh, Liberal budgets now. Yeah. They basically, you know, reveal exactly what the Liberals' plans are uh, in terms of renewing their nation-nation relationship with Indigenous peoples. Do you see it as laying the groundwork for something transformative? I think it, it will be if we do this correctly. Um, listen, we, we haven't seen anything in the area of, of social come out of this government in any substantive way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we know that child welfare is not focused on in this budget. You know, un unless we have uh, healthy families and we, we protect our kids and that we have community safety, which we didn't mm -hmm. see anything in this budget, uh, you know, th th we're still going to be running on a lopsided wheel, which which isn't going to get us very far. Uh, we we know that the federal government has issues and constraints. The, mm -hmm. the economy, uh, the the new Trump mm -hmm. administration is, is certainly yeah. impacting the Paris Agreement. So there's a lot of things happening. Uh, we we see the importance of being at the table. We talk nation to nation. That's a sovereignty issue. What, what we're really interested in now is. How is the governance working? How is the relationship going to change with the bureaucracy? How can we get that money on the ground? Okay, well, in, in the budget, there was $13.7 million put aside to creating these bilateral nation-to-nation uh, -nation relationships uh, with the uh, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. And there's also $3.1 million to create a secretariat within the Privy Council Office, which is the Prime Minister's department, to do this review to make sure right. all federal laws and regulations comply with... Uh, you know, uh, indigenous rights, constitutional rights, right. the, the Supreme Court rulings. Now, there's we also obtained this uh, MOU that's going to be signed apparently in April between uh, AFN National Chief uh, Belgard and uh, Trudeau. I guess, I guess solidifying this bilateral relationship. Um, what do you know about this uh, this MOU to support a renewed Crown First Nations relationship? We've seen it coming. Uh, we we have been talking about it at the executive table. Mm -hmm. uh, the the challenge will be. Uh, just as the as the PMO has its work to do and, and its uh, timelines to meet, we have ours. And, and, and part of the challenge will be, are we going to be ready with our chiefs and, and those that give us the mandate to sit at the executive table? Will we be ready to sign off on that? And do you think you will be? I mean, it's only, what, next month? Yeah, I, I've, actually, uh, I've actually sent that out to uh, my executive, which is the political confederacy. Uh, they've yet to respond. So that may, may become a challenge. Uh, but again, if you remember back in Niagara Falls, we signed a, a protocol agreement with the National Chiefs Office. My work in the National Chiefs work is going to be to make sure that we, we do our due diligence and that we ensure that, that on the ground 
our chiefs and those that we, we serve at the political level in our regions are, are, are well in tune with these things. We, we, we can't do these things from a top-down perspective. So we've got our work to do. Okay, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to get your reaction to the budget, and we'll be talking to you further down the road to find out you know, how those discussions and those questions are, are coming and if you're getting the answers you want. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Take care. When we return, the Nation to Nation political panel weighs in on the budget, so stay tuned. This is Nation to Nation. I'm Jorge Barrera. The budget will also give ammo to both government and opposition MPs for the political battles to come over the next few months. Joining us today are Liberal MP uh, Don Rusnak, Conservative MP uh, Kathy McLeod, NDP MP Rachel Blaney. Thanks so much for joining us this week to talk about the budget. Budget 2017. Don, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give this one to you. First off, what did you what did you make of the your government's budget? Well, with regards to Indigenous people, it, I think it's an amazing budget. We have uh, 3.4 billion dollars of additional spending over five years, over and above uh, budget 2016. Uh, w w with uh, budget 2016's historic uh, 8.4 billion dollars, it's a 27 percent increase over previous government spending uh, on on the Indigenous file, and I, I think it's great news. Okay, Kathy, what did you make of the numbers? You know, I think it's a significant investment by the government in terms of Indigenous affairs, and I think Canadians want to see things improve in terms of water systems and education. Um, you know what we heard this morning was interesting, though? There's so much need and so much money that we actually have to totally transform how we do things, and, you know, so important investments. One concern is there's very, very little support for um, urban Aboriginals, the continuation of a program and some small dollars for housing. We know that that's a significant population that now are living in urban areas who aren't going to get the support they need. Um, and I continue to really want the government and the the chiefs to move forward in terms of how they're going to be transparent to their communities. Significant, significant new dollars, but still no commitment in terms of how we're going to report to the people that we serve in terms of how that money is getting used. Okay, I'm going to come back to the the, the off reserve housing and and the, the time frames that they they laid out on that. But first, Rachel, what did, what did you guys take of the? You know, I think City Blackstock uh, said it well yesterday that one of the biggest disappointments is we didn't see that significant investment in uh, 155 million for children in care. We know uh, Indigenous children. Uh, I mean, this has gone again and again, and we're seeing that we are literally seeing a, a government that is not fulfilling its promise to make sure that these children are cared for. Um, so we're it's going to go back to the tribunal again. Really disappointed. You know, we're hopeful to see some of those things. There was uh, uh, some investments in language. I'll be interested to see if that's actually happening. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting for my riding North Island Powell River is Indigenous folks and uh, who have diesel power. But again, a lot of the funding uh, is promised, but it's wait until the next election. It's 2018, 2019. Uh, Indigenous people need it right now. And if you look at some of the health funding, we're happy to see some more money going into mental health. But when you look at the amounts of suicides that we're seeing in a lot of these communities, we need the help now. Yeah, the mental health. I was going to ask you about that. Um, well, I, I, I want to address, uh, first of all, Cindy Blackstock. And the, the amount of funding uh, starting April 1st is going to be over and above what she indicated last year. One of the problems we see in uh, First Nation uh, Family Services is the, the organizations need to be reformed. And we're, our government's working on that. So there is going to be more money, and we need to improve the system. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard, that there's going to be a framework coming. And then after that framework, following the consultations, there's going to be additional dollars beyond what it was not laid out in the, in the budget, because it, it was pretty silent on it. But connected to that is mental health. Don, $86 million over five years. Um, to expand mental health services. Now, you're from a region that has had issues um, dealing with mental health and lack of services. Is this $86 million over five years really enough? Well, you know what? There's, uh, 
no amount that will be enough that we can spend in terms of, of mental health. Uh, we, we need to not only look at just the, the transfer amounts that the federal government is investing in First Nation communities, we have to look at a new relationship. And what does that new relationship entail? entail? Uh, Kathy and I both sit on the Indigenous and Northern Affairs Committee. We heard some very interesting uh, testimony today about economic reconciliation and ultimately uh, First Nations uh, need, need their own uh, economic systems and economic prosperity will alleviate a lot of those problems but if uh, First Nations have their own source revenue they can make the decisions on their own and not be told uh, what to do from uh, Ottawa. Okay now just getting back to the whole five-year and you mentioned the uh, off reserve or the urban uh, housing strategy for Indigenous people. That was spread out over 11 years, and so was Northern Housing. Um, what do you make of these five 11 year time frames? I mean, five years from now is two years after the next election. Kathy, what, what do you make of that? We've heard lots of numbers around infrastructure in general and infrastructure. So it's it's great to put out big numbers and to sort of feel that you're making progress on issues. But really what makes a difference is when a house is built and people move into it or a water system is fixed. So so 11 years down the road, um, we're, the need is so great. If you look at that Senate report in terms of housing, this really is drops in the bucket. And I think really, I mean, I'll agree with Don on this one. We really have have to look at a complete transformation and uh, an economic transformation and and you know certainly I think um, it's not a partisan issue it's we need to move forward together okay well I guess we'll pick up on this tr transformation or transformative uh, Rachel and I'll, I'll start this discussion with you I mean we have two budgets now um, what a total of 11 billion 12 11 Total of new funding? I went to law school, I would not uh, okay. mathematician. <laughs> Anyways, 14, 14 billion total in new funding? Yes. All right. Is this, do you see this, these dollar amounts laying the groundwork for something transformative? Well, we absolutely hope so. But I think it's important to come back to what they're talking about here, which is this economic transformation. You know, when you look at some of the communities in this amount of underfunding for so long, when you look at communities that are dealing day in and day out with y young people committing suicide, when you look at the long-standing reality of residential school and what those impacts are on communities, you know, we want to get there. Of course, Indigenous communities, uh, you know, I represent over 20 of them. They've been very strong and they're doing a lot of amazing work. But they're also dealing with long-standing social issues that were not of their own doing. So I understand and I hear the Liberal government talk again about how we're giving so much more than everybody else and, you know, stop sort of bothering us about this. But this is a long historic issue and it isn't about this party. It is not about any party. It is about people in this country that have had nothing but discrimination against them and now they're trying to rebuild and we need to address those issues head on and when they're calling for help and their communities are seeing young people die because of suicide, mm -hmm. you know, you really need to give the resources there. We need to deal with those uh, emergencies. You, you, well, you took offense you, to something there. You, well, the, the, is a, a huge amount of transfers uh, from the federal government mm -hmm. to Indigenous communities, but it, it's never going to be enough. I, I agree with uh, one premise of her statement mm -hmm. that the communities have been underfunded for so long, but the, the, the answer isn't in more, uh, uh, an unlimited amount of money coming from the federal government. The answer is in changing the system. This is an investment to deal with the problems we have today. But the budget wasn't just about numbers. There were some policy, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. positions that were taken. I mean, there's a little bit of money, you know, create a secretariat and Privy Council. What I want to know is, you know, this, these two budgets basically have revealed the extent to which this your government is going to, you know, what, what their parameters are on this. Is it possible, is this transformative? Is it poss transformation possible? I believe it. I absolutely believe it is. This is, again, an investment in Indigenous communities to help lift Indigenous communities out to where they can start making the decisions for themselves, not being told from Ottawa or from uh, what, what other... But what about what you've seen in the last two budgets and some of the directions, you know, these, these bilateral... Uh, MOUs that are being signed. Um, I'm just wondering what about what you've seen leads you to believe it could be transformed? There's a lot of tough work to do and I know because I'm the chair of the Liberal Indigenous Caucus. Uh, there's issues in 
every community across this country, not only in, in First Nations uh, and, and reserves, but in, in the urban areas. And we're, we're working on a lot of problems that we, that over many, many decades, hundreds of years, uh, that, that have festered. Mm -hmm. uh, and now this government is taking a real response uh, over and above all other governments before. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're really committed to uh, changing the situation in Indigenous communities, and the historic investments are proof of that. Kathy, are you seeing any you know, is this groundwork being laid for something transformative, or do you, you know, I'm just wondering. You know what, I'm going to defer judgment on okay. that. I mean, the, the words are there, but I think we really need to see and the, the outcomes. Okay. Rachel, okay, Rachel, we got uh, 30 seconds left, uh, last word. Well, you know, absolutely, I, I hope to see some of these things take transformative steps. This, mm -hmm. this is a long-standing Canadian issue that we need to address, and it's time for all Canadians to understand the issue and start to see uh, some active movement. Um, and I hope that they're listening, because one of the things that I know for a lot of those remote communities, we're going to go back to the diesel, uh, getting people off diesel, uh, you know, these are communities, they're, they're making money, but all of their money is going into paying that bill. So when you talk about economic development, they can't move forward because they don't get that support. So we need to look at those kind of issues and dress them head on. Kathy, you, did anything to add? Did you start? I, I just, I mean, you look at, it sounds very good, money to get communities off diesel, but when you look at the number of years it's over and the actual amount, I mean, it might be a, a community okay. a year. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us again this week, and I guess this budget is going to give us more fodder for more debate in the months to come, so thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on Nation to Nation, Indigenous Affairs Minister Carolyn Bennett talks budget and what it means for Indigenous communities. So stay tuned. This is Nation to Nation. I'm Jorge Barrera. Joining me now is Indigenous Affairs Minister Carolyn Bennett. Minister Bennett, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be back. All right, let's talk budget. $3.4 billion in this budget. I guess that brings the total to about $14 billion in new investments uh, targeting Indigenous peoples and communities since your government uh, came into power. Some of this money, a lot of this money is actually scheduled to flow after the next federal election. I'm just wondering why this is. Well, I think that you know, I think that because we're building on, on budget 2016, and this is an addition, as you know, and it's putting in what we weren't able to do in the last budget, like mm -hmm. post-secondary, language and culture, those kinds of things, that, that what this really is is a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, on water, we weren't able to get the job done or previous governments because it was stop, start, stop, start in terms of there's money, then there's not money, then the feasibility runs out. and. So what people are saying is if communities can develop comprehensive community plans, then they want to know that money will be there over time. And so that's why, that's why it's really important that uh, we say this isn't uh, back-end loaded. It's actually a plan. <laughs> it's, it's actually the way that we're going to make sure that that money will be there for communities as they develop their community plans, but also for urban strategies around uh, housing, for indigenous people in the cities mm -hmm. and and all the other things that uh, that really you know we've been listening and this is what people care about. Yeah, and the urban strategy, the money for for housing for indigenous people off reserve, that's spread out over 11 years too. So I'm just wondering, when we get to the end of this mandate and we look back, are we able are we going to be able to see transformative change? I I believe yes. I think because it's not only what we've done, but how we've done it. Mm -hmm. And so we are co-developing uh, with Indigenous peoples, uh, First Nations, Inuit, Métis, their priorities, and being able to to then um, talk about uh, the things that are their priorities and how we actually put that 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 in place. That's transformative on its own. But I think that the money that we really invested last time to see the changes in. In, in water systems and education and, and now on uh, post-secondary and language, but housing, infrastructure, recreation mm -hmm. centers, and now the, some of the other things that were in, um, in the um, truth and reconciliation around sport. And all, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very excited by what we were able to do. Now, when, while uh, Finance Minister Bill Morneau was tabling his budget, a few blocks away, as you know, your government was battling uh, Cindy Blackstock before the Human Rights Tribunal on these compliance hearings. These hearings are held, being held because your government is not 
uh, complying with the human rights uh, ruling, which found there was discrimination against First Nations children through the underfunding of child welfare services. Um, and um, I just wanted to play a clip f uh, for you, sure. if you just have a moment. Sure. So I asked the minister, why is the government spending millions of tax dollars on lawyers to drag First Nations child advocates through the court system instead, instead of spending it on protecting Aboriginal children? So since your government came into power, you guys have spent at least half a million dollars battling Sydney Black Sock and AFN over the same issue. I'm just wondering, what do you know now about this issue that you didn't know then? Well, I think that what I know now is that, uh, firstly, we'd love to get out of court and we, you know, that all the motions are being filed. We, we believe that we are in compliance now. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe the 200 million that we put aside last year, it'll be 246 this year. Mm -hmm. We believe the money is there. What I, I didn't understand was by only having the federal court at uh, federal government at the tribunal, that the work really on funding formula and all of that has to be done with the provinces and territories and with um, indigenous communities. And so what I think we're hearing is that the pro people want the prevention dollars to go directly into community mm -hmm. and that we want less money that agencies are spending on lawyers uh, to be able to apprehend children and, 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 and take kids out of their families, their communities. And so in terms of its complexity, I think um, we know that, that if we are sending money that is going to lawyers to apprehend children, instead of developing a new system like the Maori family conferencing, where you have to have a meeting with the nuclear family, the extended family, the community, do everything in your power, not apprehend children for poverty, to, to actually be able to have policies in place where you can actually do whatever you can to keep those kids. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, one of the policies, Marty, is uh, that if, it, if it's a young mom who is in care herself, that there's been an automatic apprehension of that child. Um, I think in today's budget, or with uh, Jane Philpott, we heard from the health care providers, if we can put midwives in there, if we can actually build support for that young mom um, with her aunties and her family, that that, that automatic approach shouldn't, shouldn't be there. And people like Dr. Dr. Evan Adams have told us that, you know, a kid apprehended at birth lives 20 years less. Mm -hmm. Like, we just have to do everything in our power to prevent that. Now, Barrier Lake, as you know, was in town uh, today to air some of their longstanding grievances. And one of them is over third party management. They, they, one of the reasons they were put under a third party was an $83,000 deficit they ran. Your department has spent over a million dollars, they say, on this third party management to run this community. I'm just wondering, when are we going to see change in Barrier Lake? Well, I think it's changed right across in terms of all the third party management, all of this sort of default kinds of, yeah. of, of interventions. And so I think even Chuck Strahl had said that this third party management doesn't work mm -hmm. and that we are, we're happy the parliamentary committee is actually going to have a look at these things. How mm -hmm. much, you know, we said, and I've said, I think all the time I was critic as well, that this doesn't build capacity in communities and costs too much mm -hmm. um, in terms of the third party managers that has to be paid out of the ban budget. So we need to see a real change. I'm okay. happy that the First Nations Financial yeah. Authority and Kesso are really okay. trying to wrap around um, the skills so that these ca we can get these communities back on their own. Okay, thank you so much, Minister. We, that's all the time we have. We want to bring you back and talk Anytime. longer. All right, appreciate it. To it. Okay. And that's all the time we have for Nation to Nation this evening. Todd Lamoran will be in the host's chair next week. So tune in. I'm Jorge Barrera. Good night.